Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Origin of Blue Eyes At Huacapuquiana in Peru, an ancient pre-Hispanic site occupied by the Lima culture between the years 200 and 700 AD, archaeologists discovered strange masks depicting humans with bright blue eyes. They don't know why these masks were made or who they were supposed to represent. Not a lot is known about them at all. But the fact that they have blue eyes has left researchers scratching their heads for decades. Nobody in the Americas should have had blue eyes prior to the Europeans. The masks have led some fringe scientists to speculate there could have been European visitors in Peru long before the Spanish arrived with their fleets of warships. But where in the world did blue eyes even come from? This itself is an ancient mystery that scientists have been trying to unravel with moderate success. Recent studies from the University of Copenhagen's Institute of Forensic Genetics suggest everyone with blue eyes descended from a single ancestor. This single ancestor lived sometime between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago, near the Black Sea in Russia. Scientists reached this conclusion by looking at 155 people from different countries with blue eyes. They took people from Denmark, Turkey, Jordan, other nations, and compared their unique genetic makeup. They also looked at the chromosomes in the irises of their eyes. But how blue eyes made it across the world and where these people may have gone is still a mystery. Science says that one person during the last ice age was born with blue eyes, and this individual somehow spread the gene across the entire human race. Statues of bright blue eyes have been found in India, Peru, and even ancient Sumer. And yet in modern times, it's difficult to find a single person in any of these places with blue eyes. Number 9. Snake Pits Legend has it that Ragnar Lodbrok, the father of the great heathen army of Vikings, was captured by King Ella of Northumbria and thrown into a pit of snakes, where he died drowning in serpents, with toxic venom coursing through his veins. But did this really happen? And for that matter, just how prevalent were these horrible snake pits on the British Isles? We hear countless tales of people being sentenced to die in these pits, and yet not a single piece of archaeological evidence has ever been found to suggest that snake pits were real. Attila the Hun allegedly killed the Burgundian King Gunnar by throwing him into one of these deadly pits. And it is said that while the king lay dying, covered in snake bites, he played his harp. Sadly, this is one of those bizarre historical mysteries that will likely never be solved. We will probably never know if Ragnar Lodbrok truly existed, or if he was just a figment of Scandinavian lore. But we'll also never know if Europeans really dug giant holes, filled them with snakes, and then threw people who misbehaved inside of them. It's possible, but highly unlikely. Number 8. The Condemned Sorceress the mystery of Valpurga Hausmanin is that nobody knows if she was a powerful sorceress or just the unfortunate victim of 16th century discrimination. Valpurga was an elderly widow in Germany back in the 1500s. She was accused of vampirism, murder, demonic fornication, heresy, and even cannibalism. But even all these years later, historians still wonder whether she was in league with evil spirits or just caught up in the fury of puritanical insanity. What we do know is that she lived as a respectable midwife for about two decades in a small Bavarian town called Dillingen. Then came the day she was accused of witchcraft. Nobody knows who started the rumor, but suspicion spread heavily after she failed her midwife duties by delivering several stillborn infants. The gossip wheel turned and she soon found herself in prison. She was tortured and admitted to a long and terrifying history of witchcraft. Valpurga admitted to forming a bond with the devil 30 years earlier, in 1556. She was convinced by the demon to destroy her neighbors, kill their children, and ruin their livelihood. She admitted to having secret ointments that she used as a midwife to kill babies before they were born. She also admitted to using their hair and bones for her own spells. In the end, she was carted through town, ripped apart by a mob of crazy villagers, and then executed. To this day, no one knows if she really was a witch or if her shockingly detailed testimony had been a byproduct of painful torture. Number 7. The Biblical Judge Recent excavations in the south of Israel have yielded something truly mysterious. Archaeologists found a shard of pottery emblazoned with the name Jerubal. This is the same name of a biblical judge from the Book of Judges in the Old Testament. 
The name was inscribed in ink on the piece of ceramic about 3,100 years ago. This coincides directly with the dates in the Book of Judges. Nobody knows what else was written on the vessel because it was smashed to pieces. However, we do know the alphabet used to write the judge's name was developed about 900 years earlier. It was likely invented by merchants who were too old and lazy to learn Egyptian hieroglyphics, but still needed a system of writing to peddle their trade. It was the same script in which the Book of Judges was written. In the Book of Judges, Jerubal is a military leader and prophet who had great victories over the Midianites. Prior to his victories, he was asked by God to destroy an altar to the false Babylonian god Baal. And after he destroyed this altar, he was then commanded to put the false worshippers to death. In the Bible, he's basically a hero who smashes down false idols and smites the sinners. The mystery here is that because of this newly discovered shard, it's pretty clear Jerubal was a real person. And if his story was real, how many other stories from the Bible are real? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe before you leave for more videos like this. Number 6. The Mythical King of the Igbo The Igbo are an ethnic group in Nigeria. They have lived in this part of northwestern Africa for about 6,000 years. And because they've been around for so long, there are a lot of subgroups within the population. But regardless which subgroup an Igbo person belongs to, they all believe in the same origin story. They believe that their lineage can be traced back to one ancient king by the name of Eri. This in itself isn't that bizarre, but listen to the rest. The legendary King Eri is also referred to by the Igbo people as a sky being, a god king with supernatural powers who gave life to the people so that they could prosper. Archaeological evidence has shown that there was likely a very powerful king 6,000 years ago who ruled all of northwestern Africa. But the legend of Eri has a lot of weird things in common with alien creation theories, and this is what makes it so mysterious. Legend has it that Eri came down from the sky. He was a powerful deity from another place who took it upon himself to create humans in the form of the Igbos. So, for many, the Igbo are either talking about aliens who came down to manifest human life, or it's the story of their ancient king seriously dramatized. Either way, it's definitely something to think about. Number 5. The Secrets of the Mummy of Meherpri The mummy of Meherpri was unwrapped in March of 1901. The first person to behold the face of the mummy after thousands of years of peaceful sleep was Georges Derisi. He was shocked when he took off the mummy's mask and beheld the strikingly handsome face of a young man. The mummy had been buried in Egypt's Valley of the Kings around 1388 BC nearly 3,500 years ago, and yet he looked as though he had died only yesterday. Information in his tomb identified him as an Egyptian noble, alive during the reign of Pharaoh Tutmos IV. He was buried in the royal necropolis, and his name translates to Lion of the Battlefield. The other thing that shocked Georges was the mummy's skin. It was a dark, natural black color, totally unchanged by the process of mummification. He clearly wasn't of Egyptian descent, but must have been from Nubia to the south. In Nubia, modern-day Sudan, people had much darker skin than the Egyptians. It's worth noting the mummy was also wearing a wig of woolly hair that had been glued to his scalp. The reason the mummy looked so young and fresh was really because the mummification process had gone extraordinarily well. Plus, his dark skin helped make him look younger than the taut parchment white skin of other mummies. The real mystery is that nobody knows who this Nubian noble was. It's obvious from his tomb that he was important and at the top level of government. But it's strange because Nubians were not typically liked by the Egyptians and definitely not buried in royal tombs. The best theory researchers have is that he was the son of the pharaoh, birthed by one of his Nubian concubines living in his harem. Number 4. The Sahama Lines The Sahama Lines in Bolivia are a lot like the Nazca Lines in Peru, only there's not a lot of people who know they even exist. We only know they're there because of satellite images taken over western Bolivia's Altiplano Plateau, a barren and desert wasteland. Cutting across the dirt are thousands of extraordinarily straight lines that seem to serve no logical purpose. These roads crisscross each other, each one is perfectly straight, and none of them seem to lead anywhere. They stretch on for miles, making up a network of ancient pathways carved straight into the desert sand. So, why are the lines here? Some researchers call them geoglyphs. 
Others say they were used as roadways. The only consensus is that they were definitely etched into the earth by the indigenous people of Bolivia's desert 3,000 years ago. Each line is anywhere between 3 and 10 feet wide. Straight lines like this are seemingly impossible without modern technology. In total, they cover roughly 10,000 miles of terrain. It's been called the largest work of art in the world, made by scraping away the surface of oxidized rock to reveal the lighter surface beneath the desert. It would have taken decades, hundreds of people, and some serious determination. But as of right now, not a single scientist has any confirmation as to what the Sahama lines were used for. One of the more bizarre theories is that these used to be landing tracks for alien vessels. But there's no proof of that either. Number 3. Sick Neanderthals Up until recently, it was believed that Neanderthals went extinct because of infectious diseases brought about by the explosion of agriculture 8,000 years ago. New research says this was not the case. Instead, it looks like human beings wiped out their Neanderthal competitors by passing on diseases that they had no resistance to. In other words, human beings made Neanderthals go extinct by making them sick. Specifically, it was the same bacteria that causes stomach ulcers, herpes, tuberculosis, and tapeworms that likely wiped out the Neanderthals. The new information was published by researchers at Cambridge and Oxford Brookes universities. They believe that the human hunter-gatherers who wandered into Europe were exposed to these bacteria and developed a resistance to them. But when the Neanderthals came out of Africa, Following the humans and migrating into Eurasia, they didn't have the same kind of immune support. When the humans and the Neanderthals interacted, the humans inadvertently passed the diseases on. Exposure to this new pathogen spread like a plague. Just like how when Europeans went to the Americas and passed on their diseases, the same thing happened with the Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals. As of right now, this is just a theory. The mystery of why the Neanderthals went extinct still hasn't been solved. This is just the newest idea cycling through scientific circles, so I thought I'd let you know. Number 2. The Elephant Slabs The elephant slabs were discovered in a group of Native American ruins in New Mexico near Flora Vista back in 1910. In total, there are two slabs. Both are covered in strange writings that are difficult to decipher. The slabs are mysterious for many reasons. First of all, some historians like Brad Steiger have suggested the writing is a kind of Phoenician script, which would suggest people from Mesopotamia were in America about a thousand years ago. Others believe the writings are actually Native American pictographs, primitive pictures used by the ancient people to tell a story. But what's bizarre is the fact that there are elephants among the pictures, along with images of birds. This has suggested that the Native Americans were living amongst elephants. In other words, there were elephants wandering across New Mexico as recently as 1310. But nobody really knows the truth. And to make matters even more complicated, some experts believe the elephant slabs were written in the ancient Vi script of the Malian people of Africa. The script on the stones has even been interpreted to match the ancient African language, and the translation does make sense. It basically says the desert is hot, there are a lot of birds, the elephants are sick, and the game is lean. In conclusion, the elephant slabs describe elephants living in New Mexico, and they may have been created by a group of Africans who somehow sailed to America hundreds of years before the Europeans. What do you think? Is this possible? Let me know in the comments below. Number 1. The Bat Creek Stone The Bat Creek Stone was excavated in 1889 from a burial mound in eastern Tennessee. It was done as part of a professional excavation carried out by the Smithsonian's Mound Survey Project. The director of this project, Cyrus Thomas, proclaimed the stone the first evidence of the Cherokee alphabet. The stone was put in storage and forgotten about for nearly 100 years. In the 1960s, researchers Henriette Mertz and Corey Ayub investigated the inscription and decided it wasn't from a Cherokee alphabet at all, but ancient Semitic. Modern language experts have identified the markings on the rock as Paleo-Hebrew, a language used in the 2nd century AD. These experts have even translated what the stone says. Hebrew scholar and archaeologist Robert Steiglitz in 1976 translated the letters on the stone as only for the Judeans. 
This is obviously a huge problem. 2,000 years ago, there was no way anyone from Judea in modern-day Israel had crossed all of Europe, gotten on a boat, and sailed to Tennessee. This is not something that would have happened. Nonetheless, 40 miles from Knoxville in a burial mound, a Hebrew stone was discovered. It's currently on display at the McClung Museum of the University of Tennessee, and its origins are just as mysterious now, maybe even more, as when it was found in the 1800s. Thanks for watching! Do you have any theories for these ancient mysteries? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe and come back soon for more wonders of the ancient world. Bye!